remove the color check. Anyway, um, thank you guys so much for joining this uh, live virtual mastermind group. Uh, I give these every week. Uh, it's a recent idea that I've had. Um, I've had a long history of coaching everybody from business owners to people who wanted to get better at achieving their goals or building better habits. So it's something I've been doing for a very, very long time. Uh, and uh, recently I've had the idea of starting to do those on a weekly basis as a way to express myself, to share some of my wisdom and try to help you guys out uh, by just sharing my life experience and where I come from. So uh, if anybody here doesn't know me at the moment, uh, my name is Robbie Frank. I'm the owner of a company called Primatica. Uh, we're a B2B marketing company, uh, but more than that, we're an automations company uh, that is currently expanding into areas such as hiring and uh, even politics. So um, a bit, uh, and by the way, guys, at any point, you're feel free to ask me questions. Feel free to uh, just let me know if you need, if we know, ask something. I love these discussions. So I love when we do a kind of like an open uh, engagement as I share my story. Uh, because that really helps to make things more uh, more interesting for everybody. So um, what I wanted to do on this on this uh, live is a bit different than what I did on the previous ones. So on previous live events like this, uh, what I did was I would choose a few specific topics that I wanted to focus on, such as sales, marketing, scaling your business, uh, various tips for thinking bigger. Uh, but in this one, uh, I'm going to actually tell you guys some of my story because uh, uh, that just felt like the right thing to do. So if you guys want to see a recording of uh, one of those previous ones, which had extremely valuable knowledge, uh, you can just go to my YouTube channel at, uh, just go to YouTube and search for Robbie Frank, and you're going to see uh, the videos there. They're all up and live, including this one, uh, which is going to be recorded. But obviously you guys get to participate and ask me questions as we go. So to start off, uh, I want to tell you guys about my background. I want to tell you guys a bit more about where I came from and hopefully some of you guys are going to relate. So all my life, um, I've, I've, I've been born into an average family, a family uh, of middle class people uh, that were very limited in their thinking. Uh, my father was uh, very absent and very focused on his job. Uh, my mother was a government worker and uh, just focused on the kids and kind of didn't have a life of her own. And uh, that's what I was born into. I was, uh, I was a very talkative, very engaged kid that would, uh, was very active, would just talk to everybody and make jokes. And uh, what happened was over time, uh, people told me, uh, you know, that joke wasn't funny or, or you talk too much uh, or, uh, you know, that, that you shouldn't say that, that's not okay. Uh, and at, over time, I actually got quieter and quieter and quieter uh, until it got to a point where I, I just tightened up completely. So when I was uh, uh, 12, 11, I remember just being so quiet that I, I literally just did not talk to anybody. And by the end, by the age of 15, uh, I had like no friends. I had like maybe one friend that I was, I was even ashamed just to be friends with him because he was like the least popular guy in, in the whole school. Um, and, and it was just a very bad situation. I was very unhappy. I wasn't even aware that I'm unhappy. And um, then I found out uh, I got a book uh, in, in the mail uh, that uh, talked about self-development and how you can improve yourself. And that was what, first of all, changed my life uh, was seeing this book uh, that told me you can be better, you can change your life, you can do more. And uh, it, was, it was a very... Uh, uh, eye-opening experience because here I was at the age of 15, uh, all depressed, alone, thinking that I'm never going to be anything. And suddenly I get this book and it tells me I can be everything. And it got me so excited and so pumped up uh, that I actually it, it just threw my entire life off course. Like there was nothing else that was even close to as important to me. Uh, but then what happened was uh, the, the success and, and the, the ideas of success and, and becoming better uh, really started getting into my head and I started becoming uh, a, a terrible person uh, that just lied a lot that uh, would uh, uh, basically just fake their success would would not do anything that was productive. I, I remember just sitting at home and talking to my friends and telling them I did this and I did that and and they would literally just uh, believe me and think oh my god that's so amazing and and 
you know, I felt good when I did it, but then after that, I just felt horrible uh, because I realized I was living a double life. And, um, and basically that led to me being at the age of, of 18, uh, crashing again. So basically, you know, going on, the, on, on an up cycle, uh, starting to kind of feel what success might look like and then crashing again. Um, and then where am I going with this? Then I, I met a girl and that girl changed my life. Uh, her name was Leanne and uh, I, I fell completely in love with her and she was uh, the center of my life. So you got anybody here who was in love with the guy or a girl uh, knows the feeling of being uh, just absolutely in love with somebody and having them, you know, be the center of your life and, and just not being able to think about anybody else or, or anything else for that matter. And what happened was that relationship uh, did not work out and it ended up with her cheating on me twice. And, and uh, like I was heartbroken. I was depressed for, for months after that. Uh, basically, it was a terrible experience. And um, why am I telling you this? Why am I telling you like this weird chain of, of you know, ups and downs and where is that even leading to? So the answer is this. At the age of 18, 19, I was, I was sitting at my parents' house. I've had, uh, I've had a few jobs before, so I've done, I've done some stuff, uh, but nothing too exceptional. And when she was out of my life, when that girl came out of my life, um, I, I just thought that I have to fill that hole with something. So I had this obsession, this desire to have somebody in my life that I love, that, that, that cares about me. And I knew I had to put something in to fill that obsession. And then I had this idea and I thought, what would happen if I just make a whole bunch of money? What would happen if I just uh, tell myself the story that if I became extremely successful and just made a whole bunch of money, that that would be what would make me happy. And I, I did it on purpose. I did it to convince myself because I always wanted to, to achieve something special, to achieve something unique in my life. And I knew that the pain that I was feeling, that was my opportunity to make something special, to make something happen. So what I did was I, I convinced myself that that was it. Uh, but then I came into a huge obstacle. And you guys are probably re going to recognize this obstacle. It was the obstacle that no matter what I did, no matter what I tried doing in my life, things were just not uh, moving up fast enough. So I opened a business and I started getting some sales and things started moving. But I just saw based on the, the, the graph, based on the way things were moving, I'm never going to become a, a gazillionaire. You know, I'm never going to be super rich and, and do anything I want and have as much money as I want. And it's just not going to happen at that rate. And that made me very sad. That made me understand, like, I did not have the motivation to do what I wanted to do. I did not have the motivation to become super successful. And it's something that I really had to, to acknowledge. So what I did uh, was I acknowledged it and I said, okay, nothing is going to work right now. I'm going to, I can try motivating myself as much as I want. Uh, it's not going to work. I'm not going, going to uh, have the motivation to work as hard as I need, to take the risks that I need to take, or to adopt the strategies that I need. And some of you guys might be in a different psychological state. Some of you guys um, might feel like the, the slow journey would make you happy. Uh, but I knew for me, it wasn't going to make me happy. I knew I wanted to be successful and I wanted to be successful fast. So what I did was I made my first uh, truly daring decision in my life. And I basically, as a guy who up to now was making $2,000 a month on average, uh, I was, uh, I, I basically found a mentor. I found a guy who was um, making a lot of money online, who was actually younger than me at the time, uh, who was a millionaire. And he told me, look, if, if you can help me sell some of my products, uh, I'm going to train you, I'm going to coach you, and I'm going to help you become successful. And I knew this was my first opportunity, and I knew that I'm not going to get another opportunity like this for a very long time. So what I did was I booked a, I booked a hotel room uh, in a place in Tel Aviv, because I'm originally from Israel. I booked a hotel room in Tel Aviv. Uh, the hotel room cost me $500 a night. And what I did was I scheduled it ahead of time for two weeks. So imagine you're a guy making $2,000 a month. You've never had any savings. Uh, basically everything you had, you pretty much uh, wasted. And here I was taking on this insane commitment 
uh, taking on this insane obligation where every day uh, I'm going to lose $500 uh, if I don't uh, find a way to make a lot of money. So up, up to the day that I went to the hotel, you know, I kind of felt good about it. I was like, okay, I'm doing something brave. I'm doing something really awesome. I went to the hotel. The first day was awesome. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I went to the pool and, uh, and talked to my mentor and, and it was just great. Then I went to sleep, woke up the next day. And what I felt when I woke up is what I can only describe as sheer dread. It's just a feeling of, of wanting to throw up. Uh, it's, it's, imagine if you've ever done public speaking like I'm doing now, it's basically the same feeling, just increase it by a hundred times. Uh, so I, I remember waking up in bed, uh, just uh, terrified, realizing that I just committed to two weeks in this hotel. Uh, I'm going to lose uh, anywhere from $5,000 to $10,000 in the next uh, two weeks as a guy who didn't have any money. Um, and, and there was just nothing I can do about it. I've committed to it and there was no going back. Uh, but what happened that day was, was amazing because I woke up that day not wanting to wake up, like wanting to bury myself and just not be there. But I knew I don't have a choice. I'm, I'm here. And, and if I don't make the money right now, uh, I'm going to get screwed so badly uh, that, that, you know, it's just going to take me half a year, maybe a year just to get that money back, maybe. Um, so what I did there uh, was actually intentional. You know, it may sound stupid. It may sound like you're an idiot. Why would you do that? Why would you, you know, as a guy who has no financial means, who just has a, a, a regular job, why would you go ahead and risk $10,000 on something like on a crazy bet like that? The reason I did it was not because I believe that if I would force myself, it would happen. It's because I knew that what I did was I created two scenarios. One scenario was this was going to work. And if it was going to work, it's going to make me jump up. So basically go from just a guy who's never done anything special to a guy who's been able to make more than $7,000 in a week and a half. Um, so that was one option. Another option was I was going to fail miserably and it would put me in debt, but I would, but it would be debt that I went into consciously. It would be taking a risk for myself. So if I had no choice, I would, I would, you know, so basically I would put myself in a situation where I had, I would have no choice. Uh, because then I would have to 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 make that money back quickly, uh, and 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 that's what uh, that's what the decision was. Like it was, I literally just took a loan for like ten thousand dollars, put down the hotel, and I knew like like I'm gonna have to make back like three thousand a month. So even if I fail, I'm still gonna have to make a lot more money than before just to make up for the difference. So that was my that was my thinking. Now, um, yeah, Bosco says the pressure will make you move forward. Exactly. Uh, but then, you know, you may ask yourself, okay, what happened? So what happened was uh, the very first day I closed the $3,000 sale. It was the most amazing thing in the world. And you can only imagine a guy who's like 21, 22 years old, uh, never done anything special in, in his life. Suddenly I closed a $3,000 sale. I would never be able to do that. I would never be able to even dream about getting that much money from somebody. And again, keep in mind, I'm, I'm living in Israel, like where you make $2,000, that's above average. Okay. So that's, that's a good salary. Um, so I was, I, 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 I did it that day and it changed my life because that showed me I can do it. Um, and then that action gave me the confidence and gave me the ability to realize, Oh, I can actually do more. And it forced me to become better at sales. It forced me to focus. It forced me to close the deal. Because I was under pressure. I had no choice. This wasn't like where you're trying to motivate yourself and say, I'm going to try to find the resources. And I'm going to give you another example, by the way. When I am here on a call with you, when I'm here in, the, in this uh, lecture environment, I'm not preparing notes. Like, I'm not here like, okay, I'm going to talk about this and I know exactly what I'm going to say. I'm basically putting myself in a situation where, you know, you have to perform, you have to do well. Because uh, if you don't do well, you know, you're going to bomb in front of a lot of people. So that is part of why I do these things is because it's my, my way of expanding my comfort zone, my way of, of becoming, having more courage in my life. And what happened from there, what happened from closing that $3,000 sale, uh, it led into a whole nother trajectory for me. So I went from a guy who his future looked like he was going to, I was going to become a computer programmer, uh, something of that sort, just doing a boring job uh, and making some good money, but not doing anything special. I went from that to within about three months, uh, traveling Europe, 
closing $2,000 sales uh, multiple times per week. And a few months after that, I reached a point where I was literally making $10,000 a month, just coaching people, just helping people out on Skype, on YouTube. And again, we're talking like six, seven years ago, uh, back when YouTube was still somewhat new. And, um, and, and I just worked 10 hours a day and I would travel all across Europe, making about $10,000 a month. And that was the best. You know, I thought I'm, I'm on top of the world and it's, it's never going to be better than that. Um, and then what happened was I got depressed again. <laughs> So, so, you know, you think that you got this amazing gig where you have to work like 10 hours a day, uh, a week, not a day, 10 hours per week, just go on a few calls. People pay you thousands of dollars per month. Uh, they love you. You're getting amazing feedback. Your friends love you. Everybody thinks you're super cool. Uh, but then I got depressed again. Uh, and, and why did I get depressed? I got depressed because, um, I realized I'm, I'm again, not living up to my potential and this led me to the first time that I realized that I'm basically going to be in a loop, uh, possibly for the rest of my life. And, and, and then what I had to do was I had to start thinking bigger. I had to start pushing again because now that I realized I can make that jump, I can go from here to here that quickly in, in like a month or two, that made me realize I can do it again. But this time I can go from here to here. So, when people talk about doing things the slow way, like just gradually save your money or gradually get to where you want to get, people miss one thing. I would rather, if you offered me right now to work for 40, 50 years and become a multimillionaire or even become a billionaire, but do it across many, many decades slowly, I would tell you, no, I prefer not to do it that way. And the reason is when you do it the slow way, what that means is if something happens and you lose that money or you lose those gains, you're not going to be able to do it again in your lifetime. You see, if it took you 30 years to make your business successful to the point where you're able to do whatever you want and the business is just working amazing, if something happens to that business, it's going to take you another 15 years just to get back there because you don't know how to do it quickly. So for me, I always knew speed was critical. Doing it quickly was critical. It was one of the most important things in my life. And by the way, guys, if you have questions specifically about what we're talking about, feel free to hit me in the chat. I, I love feedback and I'd love to answer your questions. So moving forward, you know, here I am today. Okay. And I'm 26 years old. I have a one year old baby, um, married. And, uh, as you can see here and, um, I own a business nowadays where I don't think about $10,000. I think about $100,000. You know, how do I make that to be able to keep up with payroll expenses and everything? And that's my reality now. But I'm still striving to the next thing. I'm still doing wacky shit, okay? Just being frank with you, to get to the next place, to get to the next outcome. And the reason is I never want to do it slowly. Uh, because, again, maybe for you, uh, you're, you're, you know, that, that's something that works for you, but for me, it doesn't work. Uh, yeah. Let me open up the, the chat. Yeah. Okay. So, so what I'm doing, uh, right now, um, as the owner of Primatica, uh, it's a, it's a seven figure company at this point, uh, where we have almost 30 employees. And, uh, right now, what we're looking to do is to take our systems, uh, go into politics, uh, like literally we're launching a campaign today. Uh, tomorrow for for politics uh, to to start promoting some political campaigns for people. Uh, we're we're expanding rapidly. We're doing uh, hiring products right now. So we're literally launching a, a product this month that uh, is going to revolutionize hiring for business owners. And the reason I do all of these things, the reason I I keep pushing and I keep trying to to go to the next level, is because I know if I do it the slow way it's just not going to work out. It's just not going to be good. Um, I want to do it quickly and maybe you're not like that, uh, but that's just the way I'm built. And what I would urge you, a uh, very, very important point that I would tell you is that when you want to become successful, you can't really do it in the slow way. It's, it's impossible. Just one second, guys. Uh, you, you can't do it in the slow way because if you do it in the slow way, um, it, it's, it's literally just going to destroy you uh, because you're not going to have the confidence in trusting yourself that you're able to do it quickly. Now, 
how do you actually do that? How do you actually push yourself to do things faster? What is the best way to, to make sure that you take action on the things that, that you know you have to do? So the best way that I found uh, in, in my experience, in my many years of, of being an entrepreneur uh, and trying a lot of things out, you know, I've tried everything from mentors to goals to, to visualizing to affirmations to any, any kind of thing you can think about. There was only one thing in my life that actually helped me take action, that actually helped me move on to the next place that I wanted in my life. Again, whether it was going from, one, from 10 clients to 100 clients, whether it was going from being single to being married, uh, whether it was uh, running 40 kilometers for the, for you guys, it's, uh, it's uh, 80 miles, uh, no, it's uh, 30 miles for the first time in my life. Uh, what I did in these situations every single time was I put myself in a situation where I had no choice. So what I would recommend for you guys is whatever it is that you, you want to achieve, uh, you, you want to stop for a second and ask yourself, where do I want to get to? What is, what is the next point in my life that I want to be at? You know, whether it's uh, financially, whether it's in my relationship, whether it's in my health, uh, whether it's in my spirituality, where do I want to get in my life? And then you want to ask yourself the question that nobody likes to ask, the tough question, which is what am I willing to sacrifice to actually get there? What am I willing to give up? Or the question that I like the most is what am I willing to really, really suffer for? Uh, what is a goal that's worth suffering for, uh, for me? And, and the way I did it every single time was I would put myself in a situation where I literally had no choice. So, you know, it, it, you may hear that right now and you may think to yourself like, oh yeah, you know, I, I can do it without forcing myself. I can get to the next level without making this huge commitment. You know, I can just will myself to do it or I can just do it over time or I can just convince myself or I can just set a goal. But how many times have you guys uh, just wrote a goal down, said to yourself, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this, and these are my goals for this year, and here are the targets that we're going to achieve. And then one month later, one week later, sometimes a day later, you find yourself not doing that thing and, and just skipping on it completely. Well, that's what happens when you try to move on to a completely new area in your life. And I'm not talking about incremental goals. I'm not talking about going from... 10 clients to 15 clients, or going from your business making 200,000 a month to 250,000 a month. I'm talking about making a leap from 200,000 to 2 million, or making a jump from having three people on your team to having 30 people on your team. If you want to get to those leaps, um, there's basically two ways to do it. One way is the slow way. It's not guaranteed, and it's going to take you a whole lot of time. Uh, the other way is to do what I do, and it's to create situations in your life where you have no choice. Uh, basically, ask yourself, how can I create a situation in my life that would force myself to achieve this goal. Or another question that I really like to ask is, what would I do right now if I knew I had a 100% chance of being successful? What would I do differently if, let's say I set this goal, okay? Let's say I chose, you know, I'm gonna take my business from, from 20K to 200K. What would I do differently right now if I knew that there was a 100% chance that I'm gonna make it? How would I act differently? And then whatever it is, write it down, and pick at least one thing there and you gotta start doing it right now, okay? So another example of how I did that in my life, a few years ago, I knew I wanted to do public speaking. I knew I wanted to do something big. So I made a decision on my 23rd birthday. I said, I'm going to do an event in front of 800 people. And I, I basically just thought the idea in, my, in the shower. I said, okay, how do I go from making $10,000 a month to making $50,000 a month? That was my goal. and and what I did was I, I basically scheduled a, 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 an event. So I literally scheduled uh, 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 this entire event area that had a thousand people capacity or 800 people capacity. And I said, I'm going to make it work. I'm going to do it. And I put down, I think $12,000 or $15,000 at the time uh, to, to make it work. And I literally put that in the contract. I literally put it as a commitment before even knowing uh, that I have one person going there. And what happened there was uh, the first time I did it, um, it basically, I thought, okay, it's, it's going to be okay. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the people. And exactly like the first story that I told you with the hotel, you know, at the beginning, I was very confident in myself. I thought, you know, there's no way that it's not going to work out. You know, I'm going to make it work. So what I did was I, 
I scheduled it and then, um, and then I started calling up people, started calling up clients and, and some people said yes. And after making about a hundred calls and pretty much calling anybody I know, anybody, customers, friends, uh, I had like maybe 50 or 60 people that agreed to show up. And so I had 60 people roughly out of 800 people, uh, they were going to show up to the event. And then I realized I was screwed. Like there was, there was, you know, I had like two weeks to fill that event and there was basically I'm out of people that I know, but I've had no choice. And the reason I've had no choice is because, uh, I've committed to it. You know, I've already put the contract down. I was going to pay $15,000 irregardless of what happens. And you know, at the beginning, it was terribly terrifying. Like I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, but as usual, when you have no choice, suddenly the thoughts started coming, the ideas started coming. And what I did was I just took a friend of mine and I told her, uh, get the camera, you know, I'm going to record a video. And I lived back then at a house, uh, right in front of the beach. I was wearing a suit and I was standing and I just said, I just literally looked in the camera and I said, uh, Hey, my name is Robbie Frank. And I'd like to invite you to a lecture. We're going to teach you how to make a, a whole lot of money. And uh, I, in why am I going to tell you this? Because I make more money than your mom, your father, your husband, your grandma, your uncle, your 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 aunt, uh, your sister, your brother, and all of them combined. Um, and and that was so provocative. That was so crazy that when I uploaded it, it just blew up. And that video ended up getting about 150,000 views. It ended up getting me interviewed in Israel. The video is still up today, by the way, if anybody wants, uh, send me an email to Robbie at primatica.com. I'll send you a link. Um, and, and that video blew me up and basically got me to become a mini celebrity in Israel. And, uh, and it worked because after making that video, after doing grueling work to get people to show up, I've had about 600 people show up to that event. You know, it wasn't the 800 that I wanted but it was definitely more than the, than the 20, 30 people that I did at the time. So, you know, that, that, that was my, my norm before. And I was standing there, you know, in front of 500 people and realizing like, like I'm here in front of all these people. I haven't even thought about what I'm going to say. Like I was so busy spending those two weeks working day and night, sleeping like three hours a day, uh, just to get those people in front of me that when I stand, stood in front of them, I was like, I don't even know what I'm going to talk about. Um, but that was one of the craziest experiences of my life. And it made me grow so much. And, and the reason it's so important, okay, the reason these stories that I'm telling you are so important is because if you don't do this, if you don't have those experiences of seeing your potential, seeing how high up you can go, what's going to happen is you're going to, to never have that thing that's going to grab you up again. So I always knew, even if I crash, even if I fall, even if things don't work out, as long as I have that thing to, to aim to, as long as I have that thing where I knew I, I, I could have been this successful, I, that, that was what's going to pull me back in. And I crashed so many times. I, I, I fell so hard in my life so many times um, that, um, you know, I've had, I've had financial uh, crashes where, you know, I, where I would be depressed for like six months and just not be able to work because I, it was so terrible. I mean, I went through insane ups and downs in my career and my life so far. Um, but because I've been able to make these leaps in my life, that always gave me the confidence of knowing that I can do it again. And if I could jump to that level, I can then jump to the next level. And it's something that uh, is both a, a gift and a curse because every time it would just be so hard. It would just be so painful that it would force me to grow. It would force me, it would literally be so challenging, so painful if it's the fear, if it's the stress, if it's the, the pain of things not working out, if it's uh, not knowing what's going to happen the next day because everything is up for grabs. Um, it would force me every time to just like scalp myself and, and, and remove another layer of insecurity, another layer of caring about uh, what people think or another layer of having to have security, uh, that sense of security that keeps us stuck. And, and that's what happened every time I did it. And that's why I still keep doing it to this day. That's why to this day, you know, I might have a really good month. Uh, like last month, we had an amazing month at Primatica. I mean, I by myself closed about sixty seventy thousand $70,000 in deals. 
And it was amazing, you know, it was a really good month, uh, but I felt depressed at the end. You know, I, I, at the end of the month, you know, my, my partner was like, oh, awesome, dude, we had a really good month. I was, I was depressed. I just told him like, like, I don't want to do this. Like, like it's, not, it's not fulfilling anymore. And the reason is that I started liking the success and, and you want to have almost a natural aversion to success. It's like you almost want to love the failure as much as you love the success uh, because that's what's going to push you to get to the next level. And uh, for me, again, I know this message does not fit to everybody uh, because it's, it's a message for people that really um, are just dissatisfied. They just want to see how far they can take their life. And that's the main thing that's pushing them. Um, that, that's what I, that's what I uh, prioritized in my life. And, and it led me to this day to go through more experiences than, and then most people go through in 60 years, uh, more ups and downs, more crazy experiences all across the world, meeting insane people. I mean, I met, I met so many seven figure and eight figure people this, this year that, that it's insane. Like I met people close to celebrities. I met people that are Inc 500 business owners. Uh, all of it is because those things I did, because I would not be able to, to have so many new skills in a short amount of time if I didn't, if I wasn't forced to do it. So whatever, again, wherever you are right now, and feel free to ask questions here if you want regarding this topic, uh, wherever you are right now, uh, there's that next level that you want to get to. And you don't have to take uh, huge risks like I did. You don't have to put yourself in danger to, to the extent that I did, but you always want to be at some sort of a danger because if you're not, what that means is you're not growing because we have this tendency of always falling back to the minimal level uh, that we have to do. Uh, there's a, there's, it's, it's something that I really, really uh, believe in. It's a principle that I live my life by uh, where I say in the long run, you're always going to fall down to the most comfortable path that's available to you. So wherever right now you are in your life, you know, look at the different avenues where you can go, you know, different ways that your business can turn out, that your, your love life can turn out, that your, uh, that your fitness can turn out whatever is the most comfortable path that's currently available to you, you're going to, you're going to always end up going there. So you almost want to lock that door where you just have no choice, but you have to do it. And whether you're just starting out and you're not in a place where you're successful right now, or even never even tasted success, um, that's a mindset that you want to adopt. You want to start taking that first risk uh, and, and, and putting something on the table, actually, putting yourself at risk to force yourself to get to the next level. If you're a business owner and right now your business is a bit stagnant, you know, you, you may blame COVID. You may say, oh, it's not my fault. You know, the world has gone in shutdown. You know, it doesn't matter. Trust me, I've built this company in the past eight months into a seven figure business. It started out during COVID. Okay. It literally started out when COVID was kicking in. So trust me, you can make it work. You can build a huge business. And you know what? I think I did it slowly. Like the, the speed at which we grew, I think it was extremely slow. We made a lot of mistakes, made a lot of errors, and we could have done it half the time, maybe even a third of the time. So now we're moving, we're basically taking the next leap in our business to get to the next level, you know, to get to that place where we can hire 300 people, where we can have an eight figure business and make it grow even more. And, um, and again, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to do stupid stuff. It's going to fall in your head. And, uh, but, but that's uh that's the only way that i know i mean that's what i've been doing forever and um it's it's one of the things that i'm most proud of so i would strongly suggest that and again if you guys have any questions you'd like me to address uh, feel free to ask me here specifically things about this talk so far um and if not again i want to thank you guys for for listening to the story um it's been a crazy journey for me and you know you never know where things are going uh after that but uh I mean, for me, it was insane. It's uh, what I'm pr most proud of in my life. And, uh, and, and really, it, it's what gives me the confidence I have today to take immense risks. And again, I'm, I'm talking to you about sometimes being at the beginning of the month and saying, I don't know where I'm going to get the next $80,000. You know, like I don't have a, even a plan for that. And then figuring it out anyway and getting it done. So, so that's where I'm at. You know, hopefully, uh, if you guys uh, kind of follow me, follow my, uh, my, my journey, my path, You'll see me in uh, three months from now, six months, a year, two years from now, and you're going to see this guy who's standing right here in front of you. And 
you know, talking about taking risks and, you know, doing crazy stuff. And, you know, right now it maybe sounds a bit crazy, you know, cause you, sometimes you need to see those receipts, you know, sometimes what you need to see is that guy who says, I've made it, you know, I've got to that, po- I've got to that point. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and then you kind of believe it. Uh, but, um, I mean, for me, this is my path and this is what I'm taking, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's chaotic. Sometimes crazy shit happens. Uh, but, uh, it's totally worth it. And if that's what you want to do for yourself, uh, just go to primatica.com slash 10 X. You'll be able to schedule a 90 minute call with me there. It's a really cool special that we're doing right now, especially for this event. Uh, again, it's primatica.com slash 10 X. Just vid- visit that link. You'll see all of the details there. So thank you so much guys for attending. Again, feel free to email me if you have any questions. Uh, I really appreciate lis- you listening to my story and uh, hope you guys learned a lot and uh, feel free to check back in next week and uh, I'll be super happy to help you guys. Robin, uh, one of our amazing staff, uh, just uh, sent here in chat the link. Feel free to just copy that, go there and uh, you'll see how you can get in touch with me. So thank you so much and I hope to see you guys again next time.